Today we're going to be talking about section 2.5, literal equations and formulas. Our goal is to be able to re rewrite and use literal equations and formulas. And to begin, we're going to define what a literal equation is. So a literal equation is an equation that involves two or more variables. We are used to using one variable at a time, but this time we're going to have two or more at one time. And in example one, we have a real life application problem. You're buying a certain number of $10 pizzas and $5 sandwiches. Your total is $80. The equation 10x plus 5y equals 80 models your order. How many sandwiches can you buy if you buy three pizzas? And how many sandwiches can you buy if you buy six pizzas? So off to the right you can see a little box with our variables x and y. So first what you want to do is define and say uh, x equals the number of pizzas and y is the number of sandwiches. It's always best for us to, to say what the letters stand for. We're going to be using the given equation 10x plus 5y equals 80. And first what we want to do is get the y by itself. And the reason why is because we want to figure out the number of sandwiches you can buy with a certain number of pizzas. And y stands for sandwiches. So again, we want to get the y value, the 5y, by itself. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to do opposite operations. So let's take the 10x and subtract it to both sides. Now technically I could write the 10x underneath the 80, but I did not do that because I don't want to confuse you and um, have you think that you can combine them because 80 and negative 10x are not like terms. The 10x has an x involved and the 80 does not have any variable. So what we're going to do is just bring them down, 80 minus 10x. Now we're getting closer to having the y by itself. We need to get rid of that 5. Right now the 5 and the y are attached by multiplication, so we have to do the inverse or the opposite of that, which is dividing. Divide by 5 on both sides. And you don't have to write the right side exactly like this, but I think this is like the most straightforward way to show you that we're dividing each piece by 5 not just the first term. We have to divide the 80 and also the negative 10x by 5. So now the y is by itself. 80 divided by 5 is 16. And negative 10x divided by 5 is negative 2x. So we have our equation there and it's solved for y. That just means the y is all by itself on one side of the equation. So now we are going to plug in x equals 3 for that equation. So first the question says, how many sandwiches can you buy if you buy 3 pizzas? x equals 3. So let's plug in x equals 3. So 3 goes in for the x. y equals 16 minus 2 times 3. So do you see how I just put the 3 in this spot right here? Now let's do our operations. 16 minus 6, that's 2 times 3, and you get 10. So that means if you buy 3 pizzas, you can buy 10 sandwiches. And the reason why we're limited is because you only have an $80 order. You don't want to spend more than $80. So 10 sandwiches when there are 3 pizzas, and now there's one more case. We're going to do the same thing, except this time we have 6 pizzas, which means our x value is going to be 6. And we're plugging in that 6 in the same spot as before. We're plugging in right there. Okay, y equals 16 minus 2 times 6. 2 times 6 is 12, so we have y equals 16 minus 12, and that equals 4. So that means four sandwiches can be bought when you have six pizzas. As you can see, when you buy more pizzas, you can buy less sandwiches and vice versa. That just happens when you have a budget like that. Okay, that completes the first example. Now, this is kind of an intro for the next example. We want to factor each of the following expressions. So we have 9x minus 18. 
And this is going to require us to remember what GCF means, greatest common factor. So let's rewrite this, 9x and negative 18. I'm going to write all the factors, which means all the numbers that you multiply together to get 9x. 3 times 3 times x. If you multiply those all together, you're going to get 9x. Now let's do the same thing with negative 18. Negative 1 times 3 times 3. And I think I'm missing a 2. Yes, a 2. If you multiply all those together, you're going to get negative 18. Now what you want to do is circle the like terms. There's a 3 in each line. There's another 3 in each line. Well, what do you get when you multiply 3 times 3? That's 9. So the GCF is 9, and we're going to put that in front. And the way that you know what's left inside the parentheses is the stuff that's left over, the stuff that we did not circle. So look, x goes right here and negative 2 goes right here. So that's how you factor an expression like that. We're going to do the same thing for the next two problems. Okay, 2xy plus 6y. 2xy and 6y. 2 times x times y, that was a nice one, and then 6 is 2 times 3 times y. So circle the like terms, and that is a GCF of 2y. So that is the term that goes in front. Now, what's left over? x is left over, and 3 is left over. So that's why it's still stuck inside the parentheses. And the last one, we have ax minus bx. Okay, so we factor it like that. Now the only thing that's in common is the x. So the x goes in front. Now let's look at what's left. a is left over and negative b, so minus b. So that is how you factor ax minus bx. x times the quantity a minus b. Now the reason why we did that last one is because we're going to be using it in the next example. What equation do you get when you solve ax minus bx equals c for x? This is saying get the x by itself. Okay, so let's use the factoring that we just did. ax minus bx equals c. Let's factor. We had x times a minus b equals c. We want to get that x all by itself. Right now, it's attached by multiplication to the quantity a minus b. So what's the opposite of multiplication? We have division. So divide both sides by a minus b. Now just pretend these are numbers that we're working with. Don't get um, overwhelmed because they're letters. Just pretend they're numbers. Now this is gone because it's just one number divided by itself. That's always 1. x is by itself now. And we have C over A minus B, and that's our answer. X is all by itself. Okay, moving on. A formula. This is our next vocab word, formula. And a formula is an equation that states the relationship among quantities. And a formula is a type of literal equation, and this section is all about literal equations. And you can flip to the other side of your note sheet and see that we have the table of several very useful formulas. Perimeter, circumference, area, distance, and temperature. These are formulas that we will use throughout this school year and beyond. Here's example three. We need to find the radius of a circle that has a circumference of 64 feet. Remember, circumference is just the perimeter or the outside distance of the circle round to the nearest tenth and use 3.14 for pi. So let's look at our table right to the right of this problem on your note sheet and the circumference formula is c equals 2 pi r. 
Now we know the circumference, but we do not know the radius. So we need to get the r by itself. So look, the 2 pi is multiplying the r. So in order to get the r by itself, we need to get rid of that 2 pi. We're going to divide both sides by 2 pi. And the 2 pi's cancel out on the right side because that's equal to 1. r is equal to c over 2 pi. Now we know what circumference is. It's 64. So we're going to plug that 64 in for the c. 64 divided by 2 pi equals radius. And now just plug in the 3.14. For the pi, 64 divided by 2 times 3.14. When you plug that in, you get an answer of approximately, those squiggly equals mean approximately equal to 10.2. And remember, we have to put it with our units and it's measured in feet. So that is the radius of this circle. And that is a pretty big circle right there. Okay, last example. The monarch butterfly is the only butterfly that migrates annually north and south. The distance that a particular group of monarch butterflies travels is shown in the picture below. It takes a typical butterfly about 120 days to travel one way. What is the average rate at which a butterfly travels in miles per day? Round to the nearest mile per day. So first off, we need to figure out which formula to use. So read the information that I just read out loud. And let's talk about what we are given. We are given that the distance traveled is 100, or 1,700 miles from the picture below. And we're also given 10.2. time. It takes that butterfly 120 days to travel that distance. Now what formula uses time and distance and looks for the rate? And that is the distance formula. So let's use the distance formula above. Okay, D equals R times T. Distance equals rate times time. We need to figure out what the radius rate is. So we need to get the rate by itself. So let's divide by t on both sides. We want to get the r by itself. So r equals d over t. Now we're going to plug these two values in for the d and the t. So 1,700 divided by 120. That's the rate. And now let's just do that. And that's approximately equal to 14. And that is the rate of miles per day. So let's write our conclusion sentence. The butterflies travel at an average rate of about 14 miles per day. It's pretty impressive. Okay, that completes our lesson. You can try the lesson check below or you can wait until we do it together during class.